Okay, today I'm going to mix up some uh, concentrate for my uh, plants. And this is Organicin 252. It's a natural seaweed um, um, food for your plants. And it, it, what it does is it builds your soil and it has uh, natural growth hormones in it. But uh, it's 100% organically certified. And a little of this stuff goes a long way. I've had this packet for uh, four years now. And I decided instead of going with uh, the liquid concentrate to get this powdered granular stuff. And uh, to give you an idea, to mix up one gallon of this, you need less than a quarter ounce of this powder. So now, once I have a gallon of this, to feed uh, fruit trees as an example, you would only need to take uh, two tablespoons of this per gallon of water into a sprayer. And that's what we do, we foliar spray it, and this is either a foliar spray or you can feed it directly to the roots of the plant or do both, it doesn't really matter. Okay, so it goes without saying that uh, whatever you use for organic products, your sprayer, never use an inorganic product in it. Okay, no pesticides, no herbicides, and no inorganic products. Okay, these are, of course, this is my seaweed you saw me mix up. It's not dairy land, obviously, but uh, you can see how dark that 7.5 milliliter or less than a quarter ounce made that of the seaweed. And you can get that from TNT Seeds. You just type in TNT Seeds in search and you'll get that this is a similar product, Growth Plus. Again, it's plant, plant cytokines in here. They're growth hormones and a lot of other good things. And this is my standby product here, Fish Agra. And what it is, is it's concentrated uh, Atlantic fish, okay? Fresh whole Atlantic Ocean fish. And uh, I gotta tell you, this stuff is awesome. It gets the bacteria going in the soil. So I like to use a pretty liberal amount to this, but I'm running a bit short of it now. I've been using this same jug for about five years. So, this stuff here, you go a little bit easy on it. You can use the cap as a measuring, like so. And that's about all it takes for this jug. Especially when you're already using the, the seaweed in it. Because this product, and this product are a similar product. And of course I use my pigeon manure and the rabbit manure and I like to use more of this and it calls for three or four ounces. So you can use this uh, foliar spray for anything. Whatever your plant is doing at the time, whether it's bearing fruit, bearing blossoms, that's what it's going to do better. So if it's going in through its a growth stage where it's putting out leaves and so forth, it's especially important to do it in the fall. I'd like to be out here at 4 o'clock in the morning, but my schedule isn't allowing that just yet. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell on the video, but I'm just using a, a very fine misting type spray. And that's all it requires for these trees because they're going to feed through the leaves. Hence foliar spray. And of course, anything that doesn't go through the leaves is going to end up dripping to the ground and feeding my brome grass again, my lawn grass. But I just love the smell of this fish agra. So these are the broccolis that I transplanted. And you can see I'm giving them a good drink and that's got the fish agra. It's going to find its way in through these cracks in the ground. This has been our worst growing year that uh, is in recent memory. So. 
hopefully we can get these guys off to a good start. Broccoli, I think I've mentioned, likes cold. It'll do really well, even right into frost. It actually produces some of the nicest uh, flowers. I guess they really are a flower. A lot of people go, oh, I wouldn't eat flowers, but they eat broccoli. Doesn't even occur to them that they're eating the flower. But anyway, the flower likes to come even into late fall, which for us, of course, here is September. Once it gets to be September here, we've had years where it snowed a foot and a half in August, and I've got a bad feeling this is going to be the year. Last snowfall may long weekend and then snows again mid-August. It's bizarre but that's Alberta. There's other places you can get away with play gardening here if you want to produce food for your family gardening you got to work hard at it especially when you're not within a city limit if you're in a city limit well you've got a lot of shelter we started here with nothing but a barren wasteland so it's just taken us until now to get any wind protection at all so this is going to get these broccolis off to a huge start they wouldn't have otherwise. So we got 90 feet of broccolis and 90 feet of cauliflower here, which uh, we weren't even going to garden this garden this year, but here we are anyway. We'll be either going to the farmer's market or, <laughs> I don't know, feeding a lot of family and friends. I hope they like broccoli. Ideally our bushes, when they do good on a good year, they'll grow three feet tall and three feet wide. And you can't even keep up to eating the side shoot production. Even blanching them over the winter you can't keep up. We've had extremely good luck with our vegetables in this fish agra. That's the sound I don't like to hear because that means I've got to go fill it up again. You can see already how well developed that plant is compared to when I put it. That's just a couple days since it's been transplanted. You don't want to wait too long before you transplant them because if you do then they'll be too big and you'll be too leggy and they won't do good. And here's the cucumbers. So it's, it's good for everything. Use it for everything. Cucumbers, carrots, use it on everything. Gets everything growing. Tomatoes. These tomatoes haven't been sprayed yet either. Normally I'd spray them. They're already supporting tomatoes on them. The kind of tomatoes I use are bush beef steaks. They're bush, I use bush tomatoes, so if you'll look at it, you'll see here three or four tomatoes. So you can see blossoms here, little tomatoes forming, and you'll see tomatoes, but in reality, all the tomatoes are inside. I've had plants like this produce over 30 pounds of tomatoes. Here's my Swiss chard. You guys remember just two weeks ago, I said there'd be some change. In fact, I think it was only a week ago. Now this is small Swiss chard for us. Swiss chard here grows three feet high and two feet across. So anyway, good for your Swiss chard. Good for your corn. And last but not least, good for your forlorn squashes. These are my butternut squashes. So. We had to replant because uh, these are actually store-bought sets because the uh, uh, seeds didn't even come up this year. It was just altogether all too cold. 
but you can do amazing things sometimes. Things can surprise you if it doesn't snow in August. Remember, always do your foliar spraying right before dark or early, early in the morning when the pores are open. Now these plants are going to be out here awake and drinking all night. And that's what you want. When you hear the birds singing, that's the time to go out.